Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we're going to talk about resolving our collisions in a more physically accurate way. And now in order to go down this road, we need to start describing the, the properties of each entity like mass and the density of the object as well. So this is the physics loop. I actually want to go back to the entity class now and let's define some properties for the entity. These are going to be physics properties that allow us to figure out how they interact with the world around them. So the first one is going to be a value called mass. Uh, then I also want to save the inverse mass. And we're going to be using the inverse mass for all of our physics calculations. And we'll talk about that here in a second. And in fact, we may not even want to save the mass itself in the final release. We probably won't even need the mass. I think the inverse mass will be everything we need. But let's just keep it like that for now. And then we'll see if we actually use those values or not. Uh, the next thing I want to store is the density. And now density is something, I don't know if we actually need to store that either. We probably just need to use it to calculate the mass, but I'm going to keep it around for now just to see if we actually use it. And then finally, I want to have a value that stores how bouncy an object is. Does it fall flat and just impact, or does it actually bounce off quite a bit? I'm going to call this the restitution. Restitution is just a value between 0 and 1. A restitution of 0 might be like really soft clay that hits an object and doesn't bounce at all. It just kind of impacts and stays on it. A restitution of 1 would be like a super bouncy ball, impossibly super bouncy ball, that bounces back exactly to the same height it was released at. I'm actually going to move density up to the top here. As we're defining the entity, we need to now pass in a couple values. First of all, we want to provide the density and then we want to provide the restitution. So down here, let's just go ahead and save the density. Uh, so this will just pass the density through and then also the restitution. The rest of this, the mass and the inverse mass, I'm just gonna put some default values in here. So we're gonna have the mass, I'm just gonna define at zero and the inverse mass, I'm gonna define at one. So just some completely random values there. The actual computations for mass and inverse mass are now going to happen inside of our child classes for the entities. So let's go into the main ship class. Let's calculate the mass and the inverse mass. So first of all, we need to update the constructor. Let's pass in the density and the restitution. And we'll just pass those values through down here. So the mass is simply going to be the volume of the object, or in this case, it's the area. And when we talk about mass in two dimensions or a two-dimensional physics engine, we're looking more at something like this. Let's just say we have a box. And to get the area of this box, we'd multiply the height uh, times the width. But area really isn't, as far as the, the mass of an object, isn't really defined in two dimensions as far as I can tell because we really need a third dimension to give us a volume before we can understand what the mass is. So if you think of every object in our game as extending the depth out like this, I'm not drawing this great, but let's just pretend this is a three-dimensional box. We have a width and a height, but now the depth value, I'm going to call D, is always going to be equal to 1. And if you consider the depth value to always be 1, the volume now is equal to the width times the height times the depth. If the depth is always equal to 1, then we can always disregard this because whatever we multiply these two things by, it'll just remain the same because the depth is always 1. We can just consider the depth for all of our objects to be 1, and we can do all of the calculations with this in two dimensions, and everything will work out the same. So then the mass is just going to be the area, and we don't actually have that defined yet, so we'll have to work on that. It'll be the area times the density. And then the inverse mass will just simply be 1 over the mass we just calculated. But the only thing we really need to worry about now is the area. So let's go ahead and calculate that. Uh, back in our entity class, um, let's go ahead and define one more value that is going to be the area. And again here, area is not going to be defined by the parent class. I'm just going to give it a zero value to start. And then back in our child class, let's go to the main ship class. We need to go ahead and define the area. And it's just going to be the area of the circle. So we're just going to take uh, the area of a circle is going to be pi times the radius squared, which gives us the area of our circle. And then we can find the mass here and then get the inverse mass. So then all we have to do is move this code also over to our asteroid entity. 
So here is the constructor for the asteroid. You can see the constructor is missing those same fields we, we put into the main ship class. We'll get to that in a second. Down here at the bottom of the constructor, I'm just going to put those values in because it's going to calculate it exactly the same way. I'm just going to bring over the rest of these fields for the density and restitution from our main ship class. And let's bring it over to our asteroid constructor and then pass it on through. So now our entities have mass. Before we actually move into resolving our collisions, I want to talk a little bit about some common densities. I'm going to make a class and this is going to be a static class that's going to have some common densities in it. I'm just going to call this, uh, we'll just call it common densities, um, or maybe just densities. Let's call it common densities. We'll leave it there for now. Um, this is going to be a static class. It's just going to have a list of common densities that exist on Earth. I have a website open here, and this gives us a list of different solid objects on Earth and what their densities are. And you can see these values are in grams per centimeters cubed. And our game is going to be using kilograms per meters cubed, so we're going to have to convert those a little bit. But it's a really easy conversion. In fact, um, I looked it up right here. One gram per cubic centimeter is equal to a thousand kilograms per cubic meter. All we have to do, if we want to use these values in our game and keep the same scale of measurement, just multiply each one of these values by a thousand, and then we're going to be in kilograms per meters cubed. So I'm just going to copy all of this data because I, this looks like good stuff we can put in our list. And I'm just going to paste this in here as a comment initially and we'll start making these values we can use. So I'm just going to go ahead and format this real quickly into a list of values we can use. Okay, so now I have the list kind of set up in order. We can see it real easy. Um, each one of these values. I'm going to now multiply each one of these values by a thousand to put them in kilograms per meters cubed. Okay, so we now have the values all defined in kilograms per meters cubed, so I'm just going to write here at the top. So now I'm just going to convert this into a bunch of static read-only fields that we can use. And so now we have a list of some common objects on Earth. I kind of want to generalize this a little bit. One of the things we have here is limestone, and I looked it up, and that's pretty close to, you know, what the general what the general density of rock is. And so instead of calling this limestone, I'm just going to call this rock. And I'm noticing there's probably not a steel on here. Steel would probably be a good one to have, and probably gold as well. Let's look up what the density of steel and gold is. So density of steel. So there we go, 8,050. So let's bring that one in. And then let's look up the density of gold as well. Okay, and that's in grams per cubic centimeter, so we need to multiply that by 1,000. So it's going to be 19,300. So 19,300. So now we have a list of common densities. Just for my benefit, I'm going to put these all in alphabetical order, so I'll be right back here in a second. Okay, there we are. We have a list of common densities, and they should be in alphabetic order now, although spelling is not my strong suit, but let's move on. Um, they're close enough. So here we are in the initialize function of our game class. Uh, the main ship needs us to pass in some densities. So let's use some common densities. I'm going to pass in for the ship. So either something like aluminum or steel. Uh, let's go ahead and pass in steel for that one. And then the restitution, I don't want it to be extremely bouncy, but uh, just a little bit of bounciness. So let's put uh, 0.3. I actually need to clamp that value. So let's go back into the entity constructor. And when we're passing in the, actually the density and the restitution, I need to clamp those. But let's go ahead and clamp the restitution first. And we just want that to be between 0 and 1. And then we also need to clamp the density. And then we need to define a minimum and a maximum for that. Let's go back to our common densities. I'm going to make some read-only values that are... Let's do min density. And we'll do a max density as well. And we can just use these numbers here. I think the minimum we have is this cardboard. Let's just say cardboard is the minimum density we want to allow in a game. Okay, and so the min density is going to be the cardboard. In fact, you know, we can just do something near cardboard. So we'll just do 600 kilograms per meter cubed on that one. 
And if I look at this list, it looks like the maximum density here is 21,450. So I'm just gonna put uh, 22,000 will just be the absolute maximum that we want to allow. Back in the entity class, let's go ahead and put that in here. So the common density, we're gonna put the minimum density, maximum density. So let's go back to our game class and finish defining our asteroids. The density of our asteroids, let's bring in our common densities and I want to use the rock for the asteroids. And then the bounciness, I'm just gonna make that, uh, for the rocks, I'm gonna make that 0.2. Let's just do 0.2 on those. And so now everything should be back the way we had it before. If we run this, we're not gonna see any changes, um, but we can take a look at it. That we just make sure it's compiling. We didn't make any strange changes. And it looks like it's doing exactly what we had before. And that looks good. Everything's compiling, everything looks correct. But now we have some definitions for how massive our objects are and how much restitution they will have if they collide, and so we can start modeling physics in a more correct manner.